I didn't know I was recording myself. Real quick guys, before I start this video, I just want to let you guys know, technically, this video is going to be sponsored on my behalf by Mocan Power Equipment in Spring Hill, Kansas. The reason I'm saying that, while I was down there, uh, Rob was helping me start putting together this project SCAG and helping me figure out the problems that I have and things I need to fix. And while talking to him, he was telling me about how he really, really needs a good shop mechanic down at Mocan Power Equipment. So if you guys are in the Spring Hill, Kansas area, Olathe, Overland Park, in that Kansas area, and you're looking for a job, tinker on some mowers, uh, you love getting your hands dirty and working on machinery, Rob is definitely looking for some people to hire down there. So if you guys are looking for a job opportunity with Mocan Power Equipment, check the description out at the top. I'll have information for you guys to be able to send your information to Rob over at Mocan and get that process started. Like I said, shout out to Mocan for helping me out. If you guys are looking for a job, he's definitely hiring. guys all right guys back again like i said here at mocan in the shop with rob uh first project we're going to try to tackle right now besides spotting out all this other crap that's driving me crazy that we have to fix every five seconds we're going to go ahead and drop these spindles out hopefully and put the new ones in so right now as far as project skag backup mower goes we're going to be replacing these spindles in this video so follow along all right guys so to kind of give you an explanation of whether these spindles are good or bad, yeah, it's bad. If you're able to wiggle it around and move it this easy, elevation change side to side, That's the, the spindle one. is shot. Done. If you didn't catch the video earlier where Rob was going through the mower and showing you things to point out, this was one of them. If you're able just to take the blade belt off real fast and check all these spindles, you'll be able to tell yourself whether they're good or bad. For me, it wasn't a make or break deal because with the amount of hours this machine had in it, part of my budget for this project was putting all new spindles in it. And being able to find new spindles at the price I did saved me even more. So I'm ready to tackle this project. Let's get into it. Guys, and underneath the deck, I've found there's a crack here and a little crack over here. Not a make or break deal, but what I'm doing is just kind of taking this to kind of clear out some of the other grass and debris that's under this deck, just to check if there's any other cracks while we're under here getting ready to start working on these spindles. So we're kind of going through just checking out stuff under here, but we're going to start off by zipping all these blades off as kind of our first little process to getting into these spindles. Walking around like crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> well, so Moses and, and Noah, yeah. Noah used these bolts to kind of put the arc together. So sure. they've been on there for a little while. So <laughs> they're going to be breaking. So we're going to go ahead and start breaking these bolts that are in these spindles. There's no way around it. Like I said, the machine has 2,700 hours, and I don't think these bolts have ever came off. So we're gonna do that and have to replace that hardware, no big deal, but let's go ahead and start getting into this. I'm not... <laughs> oh. So how we're going to take these spindle pulleys off, it's actually a pretty unique design. Yeah. Pretty cool. You just take your old bolt out of the top of the pulley. Okay. And you ever, you know, if you ever wondered, why do they put those little threaded... To pop it up. To pop it up. Problem is, though, is those are some pretty weak bolts. Are they? And 90% right of these... Yeah. <laughs> we're probably going to have to heat... Probably going to have to heat these up really good to... And you to evenly. Just throw two impacts on at the same time. No, because you break that bolt off. There's no amount of... Damn. 
a rusty bolt's best friend. They're not cheap. Good, bad. Good, it went down. So now we just have to get it up off there. and crap with it. <laughs> all right guys, so I went ahead and I got this spindle all the way out. Uh, what I did was pretty much everything and now Rob's over here and he's gonna show you the inside of, was this the bad one? Uh, this isn't the really no. bad one. No, so we'll, we'll go into the bad one and show you what makes these spindles bad or good. SOS, SOS, now, fix me. Is this what you would call normal? <laughs> yeah, everything's <laughs> normal hey, about how it. do you wanna know if your skag spindle's bad? This is how you know. You can give smoke signals. Right, so we got these bearings pulled out and um, I took, this is one of the old bearings that was in it and I also went and grabbed a brand new one. So you could really see the difference. When the bearings go bad and you start to get all that slop, your bearings themselves actually start to move basically around, fall apart and, and move around and it's basically lost a lot of its metal. Here's a new one that has no play. It's kind of hard to get there on the video but has no play at all you can definitely hear it in the sound yep definitely hear it in the sound but and then it's, <laughs> yeah, it's wobbling around like crazy been used very well and it's also imp imperative that when you do if you are going to rebuild your spindles that you replace the races with the bearings. If you have a tapered bearing, replace the race as well. Because if you don't, it's still gonna have a wore out bearing. We took a break and we were doing some welding on the deck while we had it all apart. But uh, we went ahead and just bolted up this first spindle. We still got the other ones to do. Hey Rob, what's this piece called that I'm playing with? Tapered spacer. This is your tapered spacer top doohickey that goes on the spindle. And I'm just reaming out the inside of this hole to make it nice and smooth like a baby's bottom. So it just slides on there a little easier. And he's over there arc welding his grommets. <sighs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop in this spindle on this side. Randy's gonna nut me. You know what I'm saying? Get him. Oh, you gonna grease it? That one? All right. Mouthwash it in a nut set. Uh, it comes to be that this deck is a little bit bent. So this middle spindle that's in here, we've already went ahead and fixed it. I could have showed you guys that process, but we didn't. But now it's pretty much straight where it needs to be. But before, it, when instead of sitting up straight, it was cockeyed off to this side. So what we did is we put two washers on the bottom side, on this right-hand side, to even it back out. And now it's pretty much as straight as it's going to be for where it's at. And uh, yeah, all the spindles are in. Are they all greased? Will be. They're, they will be all greased. So we'll be getting into that next part here in a second. But yeah, that's a fix I wouldn't have really thought of. And Rob kind of brought that up. Throw a couple little shims of spacers on the other side. That's right. Level her back out because you got two options. They're beating the crap out of this deck and getting it back into shape where it needs to be and really doesn't affect cut quality in any way. But well, we don't want to because we don't want to crack the deck out anymore. Yeah, we don't want to mess the deck up any more than it already is. And uh, once these spindles are straight, that's your cut quality, man, is having those blades be flat and true. So as long as the blades are spinning the way they need to be, we're in good shape. All right, guys, so we got all the spindles in and installed. Uh, from just messing around with it, what I could underneath the deck, it seems relatively close to where they need to be. Uh, here in a little bit, I'll go back under there and make sure those blades are coming, what do you say, within a... About a sixteenth of an inch from being, you know, level with each other. So we'll check that out. But we got to jump into welding some stuff, so that's going to be in the welding portion of the video. Well, hey guys, it looks like this video doesn't have an ending. That's because we stayed up super late at MoCan and kept running into issues with this project. But this is going to be the outro. As soon as I get this mower back in my hands, I have to go there in a couple days, 
finished putting the mower all back together and getting it back to my house. And as soon as I do that, you're going to have an update video on all the little minor other things we had to fix along with it. So thanks for checking out the videos. Make sure you check out the playlist. I'm going to have a playlist on all the stuff I am doing to this old beat up used mower. So make sure you check out those other videos too. Guys, I appreciate your support. Thanks for checking out the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you have not, I would appreciate it so you can stay up to date. Make sure you click that bell. I don't even know if you guys are clicking the bell, but ring, ding, dong, click the bell, man. Come on, man. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.